sprint races and long distance races there's not a huge difference and in fact your long distance training which is highly aerobic with a bit of anaerobic work and a bit of sprint work and all that is going to highly correlate to your sprint performance Kia ora guys and welcome to another Tips with Tipu training video. Uh, today's question is how do you train for sprints and long distance? I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into um, the differences between the two and the similarities. Um, obviously in the world of outrigger canoe paddling, waka ama, va'a, um, we don't just have long distance races but we also have have sprint distance races. Our world championships have happen on um, alternate years, world sp sprint championships, immediately followed by world long distance championships. So um, it's important to understand how to train for both. Um, but I'm going to go over some things that um, might surprise you. Um, so the first thing, obviously, um, when it comes, the, the main difference between long distance and say sprints is basically, a way to break it down is basically looking at energy system contribution. Now the, the, the two base, most basic forms of energy systems is basically your aerobic system that uses oxygen to supply energy to the body, to the working muscles, and the anaerobic system, which doesn't require oxygen it produces energy um, without the the without oxygen um, but um, has a has a, a negative effect of producing lactic acid which hinders performance so basically you got the aerobic system and you got the anaerobic anaerobic system and the anaerobic system actually has kind of two um, systems within anaerobic system you've got ATP which is really short you know up short as 10 seconds of free energy and then you've got the anaerobic um, glycolysis system um, glycolytic system which produces energy fast but um, has a byproduct which is lactic acid um, which converts into pyruvic acid and other things basically we get that burning sensation in the muscle and the intensity has to shot stop or lower sorry intensity has to go down so anaerobic system is um we have two of them but if we go to sprint hard out we're around about the two minute mark before um we can sustain those high intensities and then predominantly the aerobic system kicks in but here's a few th important things to understand although uh races uh especially sprint races can be you know close to two minute two minute mark that doesn't mean that the aerobic system isn't constantly working right now i'm sitting here and i'm talking to you i've um i'm using the aerobic system right now so it's not like the aerobic system is completely shut off the aerobic system always has some contribution in some way it's just when we start getting to those higher intensities um where the oxygen we can't supply enough oxygen that we're um, for the demand that we're placing on the muscles, um, we get to those higher intensities. But try not to, try not to overcomplicate things. I want to go over a couple of things um, here because although there isn't a lot of research on paddling itself, I've I've got here a table that is specific to um, running distances, and basically it it shows how much contribution. Uh, from the aerobic and the anaerobic system a percent in a percentage form how much contribution you get from aerobic and anaerobic for specific distances and specific time periods so specific races so here's some examples so a marathon is basically a hundred percent aerobic but that can actually be broken down to 80 percent aerobic and 20% triglyceride, which is um, energy derived from fat, but don't worry about that. Let's say a marathon, running a marathon is 100% aerobic. You don't 
really need the anaerobic system maybe at the start but that's that's it um a <clears throat> whereas let's look at a five kilometer race this it's in here it's actually 87 percent aerobic and 12.5 percent anaerobic like i said um the the anaerobic system is is two parts to the anaerobic system so it's not just that first 10 seconds but two minutes i um in a 5k you might go per through periods of bursts of high intensity so um that's maybe why it's around about the 12 12 and a half percent which is still quite a lot 12 percent anaerobic in the five kilometers is quite a significant contribution but let's look a little bit closer to what may be a little bit more relevant for paddling so i'm going to use our 500 meter for example our 500 meter you know um takes anywhere between two to three minutes but let's focus on um record open men's time two minutes 10 seconds roughly i know it's less than that but let's just say two two minutes 10 seconds is what it takes um open male to complete 500 meter sprint we call it a sprint but let's compare that to uh, running races so an 800 meter running race takes only takes an, a top athletes a minute around a minute 45 seconds 800 meter race so this is considered a middle distance running race 500 meter wakaama sprint race two minutes 10 seconds one minute 45 seconds to run 800 meters two minutes 10 to paddle 500 meters so if you look at if you if you compare these two let's see the energy contribution for the 800 meter running race it is in fact only roughly 33% lactic and 6% um, uh, ATP. So basically, if I counted those two, that's 39% anaerobic and then 61% aerobic. This is for the 800 meter um, running race that takes roughly a minute 45 seconds. If we've got another 25 seconds on top of that time, and then let's say, because let's say 25 seconds or more upwards of 30 seconds 40 seconds for um you know not just the open men division then we're actually looking at a pretty significant contribution from the aerobic energy system so when it um let's go take it one step further uh <clears throat> 1500 meter running race which is definitely considered uh, a middle distance event it's no lot definitely no longer a sprint and that is around about the three minute 40 second mark then you've got around about 20 percent um a contribution from the anaerobic system and 80 percent from the aerobic system so i ha hope i haven't said any things any of these things wrong but basically what i'm trying to say is although we call it a sprint our 500 meter um should at least be 60 percent aerobic and then the remainder 40 percent um, anaerobic um, and a good way to think about it is that a pure anaerobic sprint is roughly about 10 seconds so that's equivalent to about a 100 meter sprint that's pure anaerobic um, whereas we're racing for two minutes to three minutes there's a high contribution of aerobic activity there. So the way that I'm going to ask, answer this question, how do you train for anaerobic or for sprint races and long distance races? There's not a huge difference. And in fact, your long distance training, which is highly aerobic with a bit of anaerobic work and a bit of sprint work and all that is going to highly correlate to your sprint performance. All you have to do when you get closer to a sprint event is start focusing in on the stuff that you uh that some of your weaknesses which may be the actual anaerobic component you know turning that switch on to make you to to sprint faster and to um to really train that anaerobic system in training because you know aerobic paddlers endurance paddlers we get comfortable with the lower intensities and what's sufficient and not but if you push yourself a little bit more to be to work that um, anaerobic system a bit more 
then that's all it takes to to sharpen up so um that's the good thing about being a, a long distance paddler is that you get a get a really strong base from all your long distance racing and then when it comes to sprints you do a you focus a few weeks on um some high intensity sprint interval training shorts starts 250s and then um that's all you really need i know that's all um kevin did for to win the world championships in tahiti um he's a long distance paddler um and just a bit of sprint work you know in the in the the weeks or a couple of months leading in and boom world champion so I hope that answers your question and I hope it's not too complicated and I hope this video is not too long. If you've got another question that you want me to answer, um, feel free to drop it in the question box below and um, I'll find some time to answer it. So thank you guys for watching another train uh, training video, tips with tippy video. Catch you on the next one. Choo.